gone through the sixth of the six judgments, uh, the seals that we saw in chapter six. But uh, in each one of these three series of judgments from chapters four through chapter 19, you will see that on, after the sixth seal or the sixth judgment, there will be a what we call a parenthesis. And the Lord will fill in some things that uh, are going on during those times. And so we see now that uh, chapter 7 is a parenthesis before we go into chapter 8 and the uh, seventh seal. Now, uh, we saw that uh, there's going to be some great uh, um, cataclysmic things that are going to happen uh, at the very beginning of the tribulation. But now he's going to fill in some things. And really, all the way through chapter 11, you have the first three and a half years of the tribulation. And this is, um, a lot of things are going on. Uh, and we see now, and in fact, sometimes we see that he projects into the future. For instance, in chapter 7, he tells us about those who are martyred during the tribulation. Well, you know, the tribulation isn't over yet, and yet he's telling us what he sees in heaven after the tribulation, or at the, you know, d during the end of the tribulation, or whatever. But um, now, in saying that, we see that... Uh, um, where will, you know, the Bible says, will there be anyone saved during the tribulation? And that's the question we have. And the answer is an unqualified yes. We know that God will be speaking through what we'll see in a moment, 144,000. There will be multitudes of people saved during the tribulation. We know that the prophets, uh, two prophets will preach uh, there in Jerusalem. Uh, we don't know how long, about several months uh, be, uh, be during the first uh, three and a half years. And we know that uh, it's going to be long enough that uh, the people are going to start sending presents to one another when these, when these men die, are killed. And so it's interesting how that uh, we see that all these things are happening. It's going to be a, just a kaleidoscope of events that are going to happening, that are going to be happening. And uh, it's, you say, well, how can all this be? Well, you know, look what's happened in the last three or four years, you know, and uh, around here, and, or just uh, uh, the different disasters, you know, the things that sometimes we don't even recognize. Um, you know, if we were over in Turkey now or the Middle East, you know, they had 50,000 people that died in one earthquake back, what, about three weeks ago now. I mean, to us, that's okay, that's Turkey, you know, that's nothing. But if we were over there, it would be a big deal. So there's going to be a lot of things happening around the world that uh, may not affect all the world at the same time, but they will be uh, a conglomerate whole that uh, the Lord is talking about here. But we see now that um, the, the, there's going to be in chapter 7, we're going to see this mysterious group of people, the 144,000. Um, and then after that, we, and so and we're going to see that uh, um, the sixth seal ends with the great day of his wrath has come, and who shall be able to stand? And of course, the answer is no one is going to be able to stand before the wrath of the Lord. And after the sixth seal, God pauses to answer the prayer of the prophet, uh, Habakkuk, who said, O Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make it known. In wrath, remember mercy. And that's a great prayer to even pray today is uh, when you sense the Lord's heavy hand is upon you. Lord, uh, I deserve whatever you give me. But at the same time, in your wrath or in your, uh, in your punishment, if I deserve it, or uh, since I deserve it, <laughs> you know, um, remember mercy. And so we see that, uh, of course, even in the book of Tribulation, God has mercy on those who will believe. And we see that uh, in these three series of judgments, we mentioned there's parentheses, um, and God f pauses to fulfill these things. Now, or fulfill, or to fill in some of the blanks that are left between the judgments that he brings about. Now, we see, that we, one thing that we don't see and we keep having people try to fill in the church in chapters 4 through 19. The church is nowhere mentioned until the end of chapter 19 at the great wedding supper of the Lamb. The bride has made herself ready. So we see that this is a time when the church has been taken out of the world. 
We saw the church very prominent in chapters one through three. But after these things in chapter four, we still don't see the church again until the Lord comes back to the earth uh, with this church and with his saints, both Old and New Testament, and they're going to rule and reign how long? A thousand years. So we see now that the, in this pause of judgment, that uh, notice he says in verse seven, after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth and the wind, uh, that the wind should not blow on the earth, on the sea or on any tree. Then I saw another angel ascending from the east, having a seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom was granted to him, to, to, granted to harm the earth and the sea, saying, Do not harm the earth, the sea, or the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God uh, on their foreheads. And I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of the Gentiles. Is that what it says? The children of Israel. Israel is never called the church, and the church is never called Israel throughout the Bible. And so we see there's two distinctive organisms that God works with. And we know that uh, God says that there's going to be the children of Israel, and he's very explicit because we see that he names these tribes. He says, and all the children of the children of Israel were sealed. Of the tribe of Judah, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Benjamin, uh, were sealed. Of the tribe of Gad, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Asher, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Naphtali, um, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Manasseh, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Simeon, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Levi, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Issachar, 12,000 were sealed. Um, of the tribe, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Joseph, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Benjamin. And after these things, I looked and behold a great multitude, which no one could number all the nations. Now, see, can it be more any more explicit in verses of, of five through eight that he's talking about Israel? <laughs> I mean, the repet repetition 